The Greedy Peasant is our very first guest on the State of Survival podcast. And what a guest do we have. When did you decide to pick up Daisy overall? Like, what update did you decide that it was your time to come to Daisy? I was two weeks in the preview. So on console, I think that was uh, 0.62, which was what they were running on preview. So very, very basic, very, very glitchy. Um, yeah, so I picked it up very early and, you know, I fell in love with it. It was, it's Survival 101. You can do whatever you want. Um, I spent most of my time out in the out in the west, out in the uh, Zelengork, right up to Tizzy, because no one went out there in official days. Everyone was running the coast, shooting each other, um, and I had no idea what was going on. You know, it's you know the Daisy fifty uh, deaths before you realise what's going on. Um, so I did the scampers out, um, did a lot of the west, and you know, uh, I played a lot with my wife, so it was more. You know, we was discovering it together, uh, playing on separate Xboxes, um, learning the game ourselves. So, yeah, right from the beginning, right from the beginning. For, for console anyway, for console anyway. It sounds like you played almost the demo version that was put out to Xbox, right? Uh, it wasn't a demo. It was more, we, we paid for it, but it was, it was buggy. The cars didn't work. It was, it would, it would glitch you all the time, kick you out. Jupin item glitching, server crashing. Yeah, it was very, very, <laughs> it was very rough. And I think that's why it merged into that faction orientated God tents. Because we used to get on with the guys, run 15 deep on the coast, grabbing freshies on our way down. We'd either recruit them or um, execute them in various styles. But it was just, you know, that's how we played the game. We were 15 people running on the coast of DayZ. Like imagine that, you know, these days it's pretty hectic when you see that sort of thing. So it was great fun. Absolutely legendary fun. So, Greedy, you are very well known in the Xbox community, not only just for your efforts in helping the community out. And it's really cool to actually be able to just talk to you one on one on our podcast because you yourself run an xbox podcast for daisy itself my favorite thing about the podcast if you guys haven't seen it yet i definitely recommend you check it out because it literally is a campsite campfire podcast it's a community that we put together uh probably about two years ago the console cult and it was just a group of streamers that were got together which and a few just players and we would go on these journeys and as you do, you pull up, you have a campfire and you have story time. And someone would just talk and talk, you know, make us all laugh and carry on. And that was the inspiration for having the podcast like that because it's like being in game and the, the audience can come in and it's like sitting around the campfire with your buddies in game, having a chat, just having a talk, mucking around. And then uh, we like to test uh, our guests with different halftime shows so whether it be zombie bowling or the shootouts or uh we did tower defense uh the week before you know anything that's uh a little bit different to day z but to really test our guest skills wait, wait hold on hold on a minute did, did you just say zombie bowling yeah so we did zombie bowling uh i think it was episode 24 we got our guests to drive any car they chose um off a jump and we had zombies on a platform that were all lined up and they would knock down as many as they could <laughs> um i mean cahoots to you because that's ingenious and absolutely hilarious to hear about What's the it, highest it, record? I, I I I bet you guys keep record. Who's ever got the highest? Uh, I think it's still up here. So the most hits they got was seven, um, and that was by I believe the owner of the Wasteland servers. So, question for Greedy: Do you find there is any advantages for PC players versus Xbox? I, I find there's a lot of lot of stuff on PC. You're going to gain a lot more people and a lot more volume of people. I, I see a lot of people going, doing that merged, following that path where you go, you get on the console, it's because console's affordable, consoles, you know, you can get on a decent server, you can get on, if you get in your region, especially in the US, 
the US probably have the biggest uh, community on console when it comes to DayZ. So if you're in the US, you can grab a, a close range server that's semi high pop, unofficial in your time zone and have a crack. Um, but you can't get all the bells and whistles that PC have. And I'm not just talking like bells and whistles. We've still got towers and walls for bases. Like if we could have what PC has on bases, it may be a change, but you can see the progression to PC. And then the PC world is a little bit more different when it comes to their communities. So what happens is, is they go to PC for a little while and come back for their community, not as much as the game. My Discord um, has 150 servers that advertise it at any one time. Multiple server brands. Uh, we have one chat, one chat with over 100 owners in it. There's coders in there. There's, there's a lot of people in there. Upgrade time and update time is probably one of the best things that I love to see because my new owners who have just started get educated by the old owners and the, and the coders that have been in the community. And, you know, update time, we all, we all know in Xbox, it's like, okay, well, third hot fix, it should be good. So this is what you're going to have to prepare for. You know, it's going to be stressful times. Your server might do this, your server might do that. What cemented you wanting to be a streamer for Xbox? What was the final nail in the coffin that went, I want to be here and I'm sticking here, guys? So it's what made me really start to want to get into streaming DayZ. Um, it was, you know, a big point of, A, I'm stubborn. So if you can't tell me I can't do something, I'm going to show it. It was an open market because no one wanted to be on it. And there was no love for <clears throat> any of the the servers or anything like that, that or the community that was out there. And when I was told that, see, I came from a, a community, I went from factions to a server and I stayed in that little server zone and made my own servers and didn't even peer out to anyone else. I just made my advertisements like I did when I was uh, promoting my faction, I made my same advertisements that I did when I was uh, doing a server. So when I finally had enough of dealing with, you know, the community server side of it and everything an owner needs to, you know, deals with the, the dramas and stuff, I went, I've had enough, no more. That's when I decided to venture out into the community. Um, I saw some absolutely fantastic servers that, just made mine look like it was worse than vanilla. Um, and I was, I was super impressed. And one of the things that I couldn't find when I was looking for streamers is anyone on Xbox to advertise my server to come, you know, cause PC, you could see the popularity servers, the streamers go onto a server, the server gets popular. The more streamers on that server, the more server that's going to get popular. Day one's a good example of it. Um, so once I eventually jumped in, it was all about showing the world what the Xbox community could do. I was out to prove that Xbox had value. The game I love, the game I, I cherish, the game I'd spent the last two and a half years of having the absolute best time in my life and finding the absolute wickedest friends. I wanted to show off that that's, this is what it's about. It's not a, it's not about the game. It's not about the graphics. It's not about the glitch. It's it's about the community. It's about your friends. You can't argue with that, can you? 